You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. You can make this possible. All right, folks, our top story, Beto O'Rourke, of course, a former congressman who came very close to defeating Senator Ted Cruz for the Texas Senate race in 2018, has dropped out of the Democratic presidential race. Here is someone uh, who generated lots of attention when he announced uh, he said he was made for this. Big Vanity Fair article, uh, of course, touting his run, but he never gained any traction whatsoever. Not only is he dropping out of the Democratic presidential race, he also says he is not going to be running for the United States Senate in Texas. Let's go right to my panel here. Joining us is Julian Boykin, founder and chair, Young Republicans of Southern Maryland, Dr. Cleo Monago, political analyst, and Johanna LeBlanc, national security and foreign affairs legal analyst. Cleo, I want to start with you. The reality is uh, Beto O'Rourke should have never run for president. He <laughs> should have run for the United States Senate. He had built up a strong following in Texas. It made a hell of a lot more sense for him to run there. But ego run amok, and here he is in October, now dropping out of this campaign. Your thoughts? Well, this is pretty simple. I mean, he wasn't popular, he wasn't doing well, and um, you've been breaking it down in terms of implying that he would likely drop out anyway this whole time. And again, you were, you were correct in terms of deducing the logic about his lack of success in his campaign. So it's really simple. I mean, it's not much to explain. The man wasn't doing well. He never really was up in the polls. He never really touched the audience to make, and had any fire or anything behind him to make people really take him seriously as a presidential candidate. So there it is. He's he dropped out. Now he gets he gets to save some money, because it's expensive doing this, well, this whole it, thing. It is expensive, and Johanna, the reality is this here. Um, not only has he screwed himself by dropping out, now uh, he's damaged goods, can't run for the U.S. Senate. Trust me, uh, the Republicans in Texas were very leery of uh, Beto O'Rourke building on what he did in 2018 had he run uh, for the United States Senate against Senator John Cornyn in 2020. Now that has gone out of the window. Yeah, it's, it's quite unfortunate because um, we know... Um, the presidential campaign and any political campaign in the United States or anywhere in the around, around the world is essentially uh, essentially a popularity yeah. contest. And if you cannot get the yeah. folks to rally behind you and to be in supportive of your of your policy proposals or to, to, to get them to understand where you stand and to get people to rally behind you, it's just not going to work. But I, I do think that he would have made a fine senator. Um, it's quite unfortunate that he would not be running. Maybe he's just saying it just to say it. Maybe he may change his, his, his opinion. It may just be a more of a strategic um, thing to say I'm not running for this for the Senate but I think he will make a a fine senator and I look forward to hearing what he's gonna going to do on behalf of the American people in the future Julia Julia the reason that's not gonna happen he was very <laughs> adamant during the campaign that he was not going to run for the United States Senate in his announcement today he said he is not gonna be running for the United States Senate he literally wasted 10 months Be better O'Rourke had he used the last 10 months to build up his following in Texas. He had ex ex significant energy. A number of Republicans in Texas are retiring because they've been getting killed in the suburbs of <coughs> Dallas, Houston, San Antonio, and Austin. Here was somebody, and, and Senator John Cornyn's numbers are down, but again, ego trip, you run for president, and he never got higher than 4 or 5%. And so even if he had, let's say, jumped in and, and pulled out after a couple of months and still have a shot, now you're damaged goods. I think, you know, he, he went off of ego, you know, no telling who was in his corner, giving him the advice that, hey, hey, maybe maybe I have a shot at running for president. I think the uh, the gun issue, the gun issue really, really um, messed him up. When he talked about taking away guns from citizens, that, that kind of put the dagger in it for him as far as him being done. Now, as far as him trying to run for the Senate, I don't know if that'll... If that's something he should look at, if it, if it, you know, if this presidential race has tainted the idea of him running for Senate, um, I'm pretty sure he'll make that decision. Um, it probably won't be the last we've heard of Beto, but I know for sure when he started talking about taking guns out of citizens' hands, that pretty much done it for a lot of people that was rooting for him. Well, I think that. Well, no, actually, that did it for. Well, that that did it for Republicans uh, who never were going to support him anyway. But the reality is, uh, it did gain significant traction uh, and it did get him lots of attention. Cleo, 
but it didn't go anywhere. Well, you mentioned that is is ego, and that's likely in there, but I believe that Trump lowered the bar. And what I mean by that is that because... Oh, absolutely. Oh, no, you're absolutely right. Because somebody like Trump, of all people, given who he exposed himself as before he became president and since he's become president, the dog catchers think they can run, and, you know, anybody feel like they can run, and why shouldn't they, being that this dude is the president? So I think that's partly why... um, Beto hung in there because he felt like, wait a minute now, wait a minute, look who's over there. I'm going to stay in here until the wheels fall off, and I guess the wheels fell off. But there's also this, this other element that yep. we're not talking about. Oftentimes, folks run for various positions, in particular the presidency, for name recognition. So perhaps he did this because he has better, um, b- better plans in the future, but he knew he was not going to, no. to win the nomination. But no. for name recognition, people do it all the time. No. There are several people who are in Jahan, the campaign right Jahan, now. They're not the going to go far, Jahan, but the they're in it for name recognition as well. I understand. I understand, John, I understand your point. The <laughs> reason that does not fly in this case. Mm-hmm. When he ran for the United States Senate in 2018, mm-hmm. he raised the most money ever for a U.S. Senate race. He had people across the country who were contributing to his campaign. He had national attention running against Senator Ted Cruz. He lost by 2.5 percentage points. He had significant name recognition. He thought he could parlay that to running for president. The mistake was that he built up a massive organization in Texas and he could have been able to take on Senator John Cornyn. Instead, he thought they loved me so much nationally, hey, I might as well run for president. It didn't work. No denying that. Yeah, that's the case. Didn't work. Not and it's just sometimes, sometimes some people need to realize, guess what? You ain't meant to run for president. You're meant to be. And here's a piece. He's young cat. He could have easily ran for the U.S. Senate. Let's say he won and beat Cornyn. There's going to be significant opposition to Donald Trump in 2020. Julian, your party is extremely afraid of what's happening in the suburbs of Texas. Beto O'Rourke could have built on what he did in 2018 and and said, boom, I'm running against Cornyn. He could have basically cleared the board of other folks running for the Democratic primary and could have been focused on John Cornyn for almost two years. He didn't. And that was a strategic and fatal mistake. Yeah. It's obvious that yeah. there was a fatality. <laughs> I mean, he's gone. He was listening so, to somebody. There we go. He was listening to somebody. He had well, guess what? He, he, he should have called folks like me because we just said hashtag <laughs> we tried to tell you. All right, All right y'all. Thank you for watching video in just one moment. All right, folks, Life Lux Jazz Experience taking place in Cabo, November 7th through the 11th next week. Yours truly will be there. We want you to be there as well. Go to lifeluxjazz.com, L-I-F-E-L-U-X-E-J-A-Z-Z.com. 14 acts, Gerald Albright, Kirk Whalum, Average White Band, Shalea, uh, uh, Ronnie Laws. I mean, it's going to be jam-packed. Now, here's the deal. If you can't go, I understand. Uh, but you can also participate by uh, getting the live streaming pass from GFNTV.com. GFNTV.com. $10.99. You'll get to see all of the concerts over the course of three days. It's fantastic. Oh, did I tell you that GFNTV.com? Black owned? Yeah, as well. And so, also, Life Love Jazz Experience? Black owned. A sister created this uh, to provide an opportunity for African Americans who live in a lot of these cold states even though climate change has screwed that sucker up, uh, to opportunity, of course, uh, to hang out in Mexico for four days and have a great time. I'll be doing Roller Martin Unfiltered there next Thursday and Friday from Cabo, but you can experience uh, the concerts by going to gfntv.com and getting your live streaming pass. So please do so, and we look forward to checking it out. Back to your Roller Martin Unfiltered video. <laughs>